to show you one way to go about building a brick jack arch, but first, what is a jack arch? A jack arch is defined as a spanning member constructed of mutually supporting view squares and having a straight or almost straight horizontal intradose and extradose. It supports weight above an opening. You'll typically see them above uh, window openings and they're more commonly found in Georgian and Edwardian architecture here in Toronto. Now, design, the design of the arch will be determined by the building you're working on. If it's heritage work, the build may already have arches and you'll simply just be recreating those arches or else building a new arch to match in with those old arches. And details to copy include the height of the arch, the bond, the skew back angle and the design of the bed joints. Now I've only ever built a jack arch on an existing building. It's always, it's always been rebuilding a failed jack arch or putting a new jack arch above a new opening in that building. I've never built a, a jack arch on a complete new build. Um, if you are building a jack arch on a new, new, new construction, you'll be following the architect's recommendations. So step one. Step one is to build up both sides of your opening until your coursing reaches what will be the final height of the opening. So we've got the both sides of our opening built up to the final height of the opening. The next step is to find the striking point for the arch. Now if you picture a circle, the striking point is the centre of the circle and the arch you are building is simply just a, se a section of that circle. You will pull a string line from the striking point and use that to determine the angle of the vertical joints. If you follow the line of the, all the vertical joints in an arch, they will eventually meet at the striking point, or what is the centre of the circle. The striking point is always located at the midway point between your opening to ensure symmetry. The distance between the striking point and your arch will determine the skew back angle. The skew back angle is the vertical joint on both sides of the arch. The lower the striking point, the closer to vertical the skew back angle will be and the less tapered your arch bricks or view squares will be. Set up the striking point can be made easier by using two people, one person up top of the arch and another down by the striking point. First measure the width of the opening at the top and mark the centre point. You can use a length of wood placed on top of your coursing to give you something to mark. Next, use a plumb bob to carry that centre point down to where the striking point will be. So our centre point is here, we'll, we'll place the plumb bob here and we'll lower the plumb bob roughly to where we think the, the striking point will be. The centre line down below can be marked with a pencil and a level can then be used to gauge the centre up and down for fine tuning the striking point. Get a screw and, and tie a string line to it. The screw will be your, your striking point. Make sure the string line you tie on is long enough to reach up to the arch. The placement of the screw determines the skew back angle, so if you are matching pre-existing arches, you will, want, you will want to be matching the skew back angle that was originally there. To find the, the skew back angle on an existing arch somewhere else in the building, just go up to that arch and use your T-bevel um, and place it on the coursing and line this part up with the, the, the skew back and then set it tight. That's going to be the angle that you're going to transfer onto your new arch. Step 3. Build up your skew backs. For this example, we will build an arch that consists of an alternating stretcher header bond. We know that a header is four inches on an Ontario size brick and a stretcher is 8.5 inches. If you lay the two of them together, that leaves us with a height of 12.5 inches. That is little more than four standard courses. Therefore, we will have to lay four courses of brick on either side of the opening to start the arch. When building up the sides, lay your brick towards the opening so that the last brick you lay is the skew back. Dry lay the skew back and mark the bottom of the brick with a pencil where the cut will start. Take the T-bevel and place it on the brick you just marked, making sure the bevel is sitting flush to the bottom of the brick. Mark the angle with a pencil, making sure the angle starts at the mark you made and it's in the right direction. Cut the angle into the brick. You can do this with a bolster chisel or a handheld grinder. Lay the brick and use a string line to make sure that the cut is following the right angle. Do this for each of the four courses on either side, making sure the skew back is good by pulling the string line. Step 4. Install the false work that supports the arch throughout the building. Because the introduce is straight, or in basic terms, because it's a flat arch, you can use a 2x4 for this. Make sure you use a straight piece of wood. Side it down and make sure there's no bends or, or warps in it. Cut the 2x4 half inch shorter than the opening. 
If you're rebuilding an arch and there's a wooden window frame there, you can screw the form into the frame. Use two off cuts to project the form out so that it sits in the center of the arch. If there is no window frame, you can support the form with wood secured to the jam of the opening. Mark where the bottom of the form will sit by measuring down from the corner of the skew back. Secure the two pieces of wood so that the top sits just at the mark. You can do this by screwing them into the wall or by using F clamps or both. Secure the form by screwing it to the supports. Screw a 2x4 under the form to give it more strength. You can also install a few posts that run from the form to the window sill down below. That will give it extra strength. When you're installing these posts, use wood shims so that when it comes to taking the form work out, it's a lot easier and you don't risk jolting the arch. Whatever you do, make sure that your form work is secure. If you don't feel safe hanging off that form, then it's not going to support your arch. After all, if you have an arch with 20, 30, 40 bricks, that, that, that form has to support 200 plus pounds. So if you aren't happy enough swinging out of that arch with your body weight, then you need to make it more secure. So I've now drawn in the form work here on our, our diagram. This is what the arch will sit on, on top of. This piece of wood here is to provide it more strength, uh, prevent it from flexing. This wood here is secured into both sides of our opening with screws. And here we have posts that run down to the window sill. So I would feel fairly confident with building an arch on top of this. As you're building your form work, you wanna make sure that the, the, the piece of wood that your arch sits on top of, it's not tilting forward and it's not tilting backwards. You also wanna make sure that it's running in a straight line from the corner of this skew back to this skew back here. The level of the, of the formwork isn't as important because you'll be working, most likely you'll be working on an existing building and the courses will already be established. So those courses might be out of level um, and there's nothing really you can do about that. So you will want to make sure that your arch is following the coursing that's already been established. And to do that, level isn't as important. Um, and the next thing, you wanna make sure that when you install your formwork, that you install it in such a way that you can then remove it without disturbing the arch. You don't want to have screws coming in on, from the top that need to be removed in order for you to remove your, your formwork because there's gonna be an arch sitting on top of this. So that's a very important point uh, to consider when you're building your form. The next thing you wanna do is you wanna work out the bond and the number of view squares that will be in the arch. To do this, we measure the distance between the two widest points of the arch. So that'll be this point here and that point here. Now this diagram isn't the scale, but the figures that I mentioned will be uh, correct. So let's assume that the distance from here to here is 44 and 3 eighths. Now the height of an, of an Ontario size brick is two and a half inches. The standard joint is 3 eighths. So we'll always want to start with a full brick at the top of the arch. And what I mean by that is, we, we, we don't want to have this brick up here start, start with a taper. We want the taper to be down at the bottom of the arch. So we, up here, we want to start with a full brick and a, a standard joint. So in this case, that would be two and seven eighths, roughly. That would be a two and a half inch brick with a three eighth inch joint. Now, before we start doing any calculations, what we'll do is we'll take a 3 8 inch joint off the 44 and 3 8. And the reason we do that is because that joint is left over. It'll be joint, brick, joint, brick, joint, brick, joint, brick, until we get to the end where it'll be joint, brick, joint. So we take that joint off in order to make sure that we get a precise uh, measurement when we're doing our, our calculations. In order to find out how many view squares we can fit in this opening, we can use our brick tape. So as I said, we want the coursing of roughly two and seven eighths. So what we do is we take out our brick tape and we look at where two and seven eighths is. We note the numbers that are there. So it's, we can see that seven, eight and nine are roughly around two and seven eighths. So we pull our tape out to 44 inches and we can see that the number nine is just beyond, a 16th beyond 44 inches. So a 16th is definitely within our variance here. So what we'll do then is we'll count all the nines up until 
44 inches to see how many uh, VUSARs we can fit in. So after we've counted them, we, we realized we can fit in 15 VUSWARs. A VUSWAR is just another name for a brick in an arch. The next thing we'll want to do is we'll want to work out the joint spacing at the bottom of the arch. So let's say that the distance from here to here is 38 inches. First of all, we take a joint away from 38 inches and end up with 37 and 5 eighths. Next, we divide, we divide 37 and 5 eighths by 15. That will give us, uh, us 2.508, or else two and a half inches roughly. So if we know that we have to have a coarsen of two and a half inches and uh, an Ontario size brick is two and a half inches, that will mean that we will have to take three eighths of an inch off the brick at the bottom and taper it up to zero to keep the joint size at three eighths consistent along the whole joint. So we know that the coursing on the bottom of our arch is going to be two and a half inches. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to mark that on our form. So again, we'll go to our trusty brick tape measure. We'll go to two and a half inches and we'll see that the number two is right there at two and a half inches. We go to 37 and 5 eighths on our brick tape measure. 37 and 5 eighths and we can see that the number two is at 37 and a half. Now we wanted it to be at 37 and 5 eighths but it's at 37 and a half and uh, one eighth of an inch is definitely within the variance of us being able to use it so we'll use the number two. So again we'll make sure that there's 15 um, twos before we get to 37 and a half. We count them up we see that there's 15. The next thing we do we place it on our form and we just mark off all the tools and that will let us know where each course will have to sit. Now because we had that one eighth variance what you can do is you can mark seven tools going this way and seven tools coming this way and that way that one eighth of a difference will be taken out in the center so again there won't be any it'll be symmetric you won't notice it uh, on one side or the other it'll be in the center so it'll be more pleasing to the eye. Um, now the next thing you'll want to do is you'll want to work out your bond. As I said, we're doing an alternating stretcher header bond. So because there's 15 bricks, um, that means that we can start either side of the arch with the same course. And we can put a stretcher header here and a stretcher header here. And we know that when we get to the center, we won't have um, you know, two of the same uh, course. And, if it's an even number of bricks, then we have to split it up. We have to have a stretcher here, header here, and a header here, stretcher here. But because we have an odd number of bricks, we know that we can start with the same coursing on either side. So now that we've marked our coursing on the formwork here, um, we can go about setting up. Now remember, this diagram here is just a, it's just a rough diagram, and it's not the scale. But obviously, just focus on what I say and pictures that I show you. So when it comes to setting up, you want to make sure that you're set up properly with absolutely everything you need at hand. Because if you have to go searching for something, it's going to affect your efficiency. So before you start laying any brick, before you start cutting anything, make sure that you are thoroughly set up and that everything is at the right height. You want to make your book, a full bucket of mortar, maybe even two buckets of mortar before you, you start building your arch. Now when I'm building an arch, I like my mortar to be just that bit richer because you're doing a lot of, um, you're doing a lot of buttering. And if you make your, your mortar a bit richer, uh, you know, make it a bit more lime heavy, um, I find that helps with being able to butter the brick. And it also helps with being able to com compress the brick. If you need to um, you know, tap in a brick, uh, make it a bit tighter of, of a joint. If you have richer mortar, I find that that helps. So um, what I use is a T-bevel, a pencil of course, a brick hammer, a trowel, a slicker, a variety of slickers. I'll, I'll typically use um, you know, a 3 8 slicker and a slicker that's slightly uh, thinner than that just so if there's any tight joints I can get my slicker in there. Um, I'll use a tape measure of course, a hand brush, a four foot level, a bucket of water I'll have beside me. Um, I'll have a blower and I'll have a grinder with a diamond blade on a flush mount. Now the flush mount is important. Um, 
Typically, I don't use a guard on the grinder when I'm building an arch, which I know can be dangerous, uh, but I always wear full PPE. I'll never take a chance in, in, with, with that regard. But I find if you don't, uh, if when you're cutting the view squares and you have a guard on your brick, it makes it very difficult to cut, uh, cut the view squares. So what I'll do is I'll take the guard off the brick just for when I'm building arches. Um, and then the next thing I want to make sure is when it comes to PPE, and uh, the stuff that I recommend wearing is good safety glasses, uh, ear protection, because there will be a lot of noise. Um, you want to have a, a, a face mask, you want to be clean shaven, you want to have a good respirator. Yeah. A, a face shield is definitely something that I'd recommend just in case something goes fine. If you have a face shield, your, your, your face is protected. And the next thing you want to have the, the platform around you set up. You want to have the plaf a platform behind you and I want to be about waist height. And you want to have enough room to be able to lay out your brick and have your tools there too without being too cluttered. Um, and the arch itself, I will position my scaffolding so that the arch I'm building, um, the, the, the top of the arch is no, no higher than head height. And that just means that I'm not reaching up and um, my shoulders don't get tired and it uh, makes things a lot easier. You also don't want to have it too low either, otherwise you're bending down to check things and that's no good either. So the next thing you want to do is you want to cut and lay the view squares. So first of all, before we even start, I like to have all my brick pre-soaked. Um, the reason for this is when you're using a heritage style brick, um, they can be quite dry and they like to soak up a lot of water. If you're building an arch, you want to have enough time to be able to play with the bricks, get them into the right position. You don't want to have to be in a rush to, to get them into the right position because if, if the bricks are completely dry, they'll suck the water out of the, the mortar and it'll make your job that bit harder. So what I like to do is I like to pre-soak my bricks, especially if it's a hot day, I'll uh, dunk them in the water and make sure that they're uh, you know they have, that they have uh, that they've taken up enough water to allow me to to lay them without worrying that the the mortar is going to set up too quick. As I mentioned, we'll start off with a stretcher at each end of the arch. The first thing we will do is we will get the angle of our skew back. So what we'll do is we'll take our T bevel here, and we will put it on our form, and we will get this angle here. So the yeah, the bottom of our T-bevel will be sitting flush with the form and we want to line up this part with the um, skew back. We take our T-bevel and we take our brick. I've cut this to the actual size of an Ontario size brick. So this brick is going to sit here. Now if we sit this up against the um, skew back, you can see that this doesn't sit flat we want to make sure that this 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 section of the brick down here is sitting flat with our form so we take our t bevel and we place it flush with the side of the brick and we bring it up until it sits with the corner here i've marked the brick there so you can see um when once i cut that this brick will then sit flush with both the form and the skew back here i've made the cut at the bottom of the brick that's the first step we want to make sure that this brick sits um, nicely on the form, that it's not rocking, not rocking back and forth, that this cut is done uh, properly and that there's a consistent joint all the way along this skew back. You don't want this brick leaning, leaning too far in, leaning too far out and you don't want there to be anything here that can cause this brick to rock. So I want to make sure we have a nice clean cut. We make our cuts with a handheld grinder. Now you'll only be able to sink the blade in at a certain depth. So sink the blade in as far as you can go. Uh, knock the excess off with your hammer and then continue on the cut. And that's why a flush mount is so important because with a flush mount you can, you can come in at, at a right angle to the, the line that you were cutting. You do not want to come in at a, at a sharp angle because um, that will mean that when you go to place your brick on the form it will sit forward or it will sit backwards. You want to make sure that this angle going in is at 90 degree uh, to the face of the brick and you can check that with a, a T-square. You can put a T-square up against the face of the brick to make sure that your cut is uh, good and proper and that when you put it down it's going to sit uh, it's going to sit correct on your form. Because we have the same coursing starting on either side, we can make two cuts at the same time. Um, and this is, this is efficient because we can use the same angle. We don't need to adjust this angle. We can, we can transfer the angle onto the bottom of this brick and transfer the angle at the, onto the bottom of this brick at, at the same time using the same angle. 
uh, and it's just more efficient that way. The next thing you'll want to do is after you've cut both your bricks and you know that this cut is done properly, you'll take one of the bricks, you'll place it on the form and you'll just you'll place it so that you have a 3 8 joint here. Now again, this diagram isn't the scale, but I'm just uh, but how I'm doing it is, is still the correct way of doing things. So you pull your brick out until there's a 3 8 joint here against your skew back. Now you will have a mark here. You will have a mark here dictating your course. And so what you do is you get your string line, you pull it up through that mark, like so. First thing you do is you mark the bottom of the brick and you then mark where the string line hits the top of the brick, like that. And you do that for both bricks on either side of the arch. You then take your brick off, you set it down, and you, you, you draw a straight line from this mark up here to that mark down there. So here you can see a, a, I've marked where the string line intersected the brick. Now I'm gonna go ahead and cut that. You'll be cutting it with a grinder. Now the next thing I'll say is, whenever you're building an arch, try to always make sure that when you're laying your brick, the frog is facing uh, towards the center of the arch. It'll just make your life easier because you'll have, to, you'll have less um, material to cut through when you're removing um, this line here. So after you've cut your brick, the next thing I'll do is I'll take my, I'll take my brick and I'll dump them in the bucket of water. That's to get off any um, dust that was created when you cut them. Um, I will then put them on the form, make sure they sit, they sit properly. The next thing I'll do is I will butter the skew back so that there's about a quarter inch of water on the skew back and I'll then butter my, my brick so that there's you know, roughly three eighths of an inch of mortar covering uh, the entire bed of the brick. I'll place my brick down and I'll, I, I won't force the brick in. I'll place it so that I know that it's, 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 it's gonna stick and it's gonna sit, but I won't, I won't uh, you know, compress the brick. I'll place it there. Uh, the next thing I'll do is I will take my string line and I will make sure that the brick is lined up so once I know that the, the, the brick is lined up and that the corner of the brick is hidden the mark um, the next thing I'll do is I'll make sure that it's running across my arch it's running flush with both sides of the open and to do that you can just take a straight edge. This is just a pole, and you can, like I would use a four foot level, but for demonstration purposes, I have a pole handy. Um, so what you do is you'd simply just put your four foot level up against either side of the arch and make sure that your view squares are, are touching uh, your level and that your level is touching both sides of the opening. And if you have a, a, an opening that's larger than a four foot level, you can just use a really straight piece of two by four. Um, and the other thing you can also do is you can also have a string line running across. That can be handy too. Sometimes the string line can get in the way. It can make it uh, a bit frustrating. Um, but what I will do is I'll hang a string line loose so that when I place my brick there, I can pull the string line tight. Um, and then when I let go of the string line, it sits below the arch again. Um, so that it's not getting in my way. After you've pointed up your brick, you make sure that the joint is nice and full. You make sure that the brick is sitting nice and it's not gonna, uh, the bond isn't gonna pull away. And here's the other thing about making sure that this cut is done absolutely perfect. If, um, if there's any, you know, bits of brick that are sticking out, when you go to, to, to place your brick, uh, you know, the weight of the brick itself can pull it away from uh, what you're laying into. But if this cut is done um, the right way, the brick will be sitting fine and um, you know there won't be any issues of as you go along, this, this can then pull away. You, know, you can be safe in the knowledge that uh, you know, the arch bricks that you're laying are um, you know, gonna be safe. So the next thing that we wanna do is we wanna lay the header. Now, the first thing you do is you take your header and you dry lay it. You dry lay it into position, and you mark the brick 
where your stretcher hits the bottom of the header. Um, so the reason why we mark this is because we still have to taper this header. Now the taper is going to practically zero. So you know that, that, that your line is going to start up in this corner and it's going to run down to where you made your mark there. So there's two marks that you want to make on the, the brick that's going to sit at the top of the arch. Because this is a flat arch, the, the, your coursing uh, that sits above the arch is going to run straight across. So you're going to make two marks. You're going to make a mark you're gonna make a mark on the side and you're gonna make a mark on the top. Now the mark on the top will be dictated by the, the, the your final course. And well, obviously this diagram isn't isn't to scale, but if it was somewhat to scale, your 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 header would be sitting something like that. So what you'll want to do is you'll want to get uh, your level, your four foot level, you wanna run it across um, the, the top course and, and mark this line here. So you'll wanna mark the line that uh, from where your coursing uh, runs in a straight line. You wanna mark that on your, on your header so that when you cut the brick and you lay it, um, you know that when you go to lay your, your bricks on top that it, you're gonna have a consistent joint running right the way across. After you've cut, cut your header, you've cut the two, two lines into the header, um, the side and the top. Now I haven't cut the top in, in this example. Um, sometimes what I'll do is I will skip cutting the top of the arch and after everything's uh, laid I will uh, mark a line going across and I will just go with my grinder and I'll gently cut off the, the, the top of the arch. Um, it is, it can be a faster way of, of doing an arch um, but again uh, if you wanted to skip that you would mark the top of your your header or stretcher whatever's at the top of the arch and you would cut it then and there so that when you lay it you don't have to cut it after after the arch is built. So after I've cut the, 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 the header and then uh, dunk it in the bucket of water, clean all the dust off it, I will butter the side of the skew back um, and I will butter the bed joint here. So this would be sitting, you know, like that. I would butter the skew back, I would butter the bed joint here and I'd butter the, uh, the bed joint on the, or the perp on the header. I would place it in, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, uh, I'd place it in so I know that it's steady. Uh, what I do then is I would take my uh, string line and I'd pull it up through, make sure it's lining up with my stretcher that I've just laid. I know my stretcher is laid uh, correct and I would make sure that the header is following that line. Um, so once we know that the, uh, the header is following that line, we can then get our straight edge and we can hold it up against both sides of the opening to make sure that that brick is also running flush from one side to the other. So I've showed you the basic steps and how to cut and lay the view squares. Now the next course will begin with a header and just like the previous course we follow all the same steps. We, we get the angle with our T-bevel, we get this angle with our T-bevel, we transfer it onto the bottom of the header, we cut the header, we place it down, we give ourselves roughly 3 eighths of an inch of a joint. Now there'll be a mark, there'll be a mark somewhere here, we pull our string line up through that mark, where that line intersects the top of the header, we, we mark it, we take our brick off, we draw a straight line uh, connecting the two marks, we cut it, we lay the header and then the next brick that goes on top is the stretcher and just like with the, the previous course we mark the stretcher where it um, hits the top of the, the corner of the header um, and then we know that we're going to taper it uh, from zero so from zero to wherever we, we've marked on the stretcher that's where we um, make our cut and then we lay the stretcher and we just follow those steps until the whole arch is built um, and it's just a matter of, 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 of taking the steps uh, knowing the steps and then following the steps it's not really that difficult um, you know, it, it, it only gets difficult when, you, when you're workmanship and the cuts that you're making aren't right. Now the reason why I like using this method to build a jack arch is because you can give and take as you're laying your view, view squares. 
if you've made a slight error and you've laid one of your view squares just a little bit back from the mark, well then when you go to do your next course and you can give yourself a 16th or you can give yourself an 8th and catch back up so that when you get to the center of the arch you don't have these massive joints. Um, and, and the same can be said if you um, lay your brick a little bit um, ahead of the mark you can then take a 16th off the next course or take a, an 8th off the next course and still have an aesthetically pleasing arch um, but if you pre-cut all your view, view squares um, you have to then lay them uh, perfect which isn't difficult but with this uh, method of, of laying a jack arch you can hit the ground running and um, you don't need to clear out the space to, to cut your uh, view squares you can you can uh, cut and, and you can cut and lay as you go and uh, you can make up space and you can take uh, space away if you make any minor mistakes which I think is, is handy so I just want to point out that that's of course not the only way that you can uh, approach building a jack arch uh, the other thing I want to say is that this diagram isn't a scale um, I just went over the theory of building a jack arch you know, realistically, if you're going to build a jack arch, you're you know a fairly competent mason. So, you know, you don't need to have have a diagram to to go off. And if you're a homeowner looking, well, you know, at least you know the the effort and the the the, the time that it can take to build a, a jack arch. And um, so here's a couple of tips that I also want to go through. Um, always try and plan to build your arch at the start of the day. You don't want, you don't want to start an arch at two o'clock in the day because, and I'll, and I'll tell you why. If you start building a, a jack arch at two, two, two o'clock in the day and you're, you're gonna leave at four o'clock, let's say you get a couple of courses in, you get a couple of courses in, you leave them, and you come back the next day and you go to start building. But when you put your four foot level up against the wall, you realize that your view squares have started to tip out slightly. But now you can't do anything about it because the, the mortar uh, has already started to set up. So now you have to take down your view squares and start all over. Whereas if you were to start a jack arch at the start of the day, um, you know, that would give you the best chance of finishing the whole arch in one day. And if as you're building for some reason, you have uh, one or two view squares, um, slightly move you can then hit you can hit them back into place you can put your level up against the wall and hit them into place uh, and and you know point up the joint and everything is going to be fine uh, but if you if you have to uh, continue on an arch that you started the day before you're not going to be able to do that the mortar is going to be gone off so here's another thing and it's got to do with the string line what i'll do is i'll tie a loop on my string line and i'll uh, place a screw somewhere uh, beside where I'm building an arch, usually in the form. So if I have a screw in the form and I'm not using the string line, I can just hook my, my line on that screw, um, which is you know very convenient because oftentimes in the past, I've been laying a, a, a view square or, 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 or an arch brick and I've gone to grab my string line only to realize that it's down below um, on the, the, the lower level of scaffolding. So now I have to skip what I'm doing. I have to climb down, get the string line and uh, place it so that when I climb back up, I can get it again. So if I have a, a screw here and I have a loop in the string line, I can then just um, hang, the string line, hang the string line on the screw and it makes it uh, easy to grab and it makes it very accessible and it saves time. And lastly, as I said before, um, sometimes when I'm laying a, a jack arch, what I'll do is I will roughly cut the top of the arch with a brick hammer as I'm laying. And then once everything's laid, uh, once, once it's set up the, the next day, what I'll do is I'll use a, a straight edge or my four foot level. I will mark from this side of the opening to this side. I'll, I'll, I'll draw a line across all the view squares um, and then what I'll do is I'll get my grinder and I'll go along and I'll cut down the top of the arch. Um, you know, and there is risk involved in that because the, the, the grinder can only sink so far. So when you make your cut, you have to uh, break off the brick with a hammer. But, you know, I haven't had any disasters yet. And um, it can sometimes speed up the process of building a jack arch if you cut the top uh, once you're finished. So that's my video on the theory of building a jack arch. If you found that helpful, let me know in the comments down below. And if you need uh, explanation on anything I went over, don't hesitate to get in touch. 
We have our social media handles and we can be contacted through Instagram and through Facebook. And if you're a homeowner and you have a detail like that in your house, don't hesitate to get in contact because we're always interested in taking on difficult projects. Cheers. Thank you.